Okay, so here I want to solve problem 2.1 from the Gaskell textbook. And in this, uh, we're basically looking at uh, taking an ideal gas at a given temperature pressure and uh, going through first, well, two different uh, expansions. Uh, one is going through a reversible isothermal expansion to a, a new pressure. And then the second for comparison is going through a reversible adiabatic expansion to the same pressure. Uh, and the heat capacity is given as, as well. So let's, let's look at these two expansions. Okay, we start out at T1 of 300 Kelvin, an initial volume of 15 liters and a pressure of 15 atmospheres. And for this first part, which I'll, I'll call uh, Call this part A. This is an isothermal expansion. And in that isothermal expansion, we're given that the pressure goes to 10 atmospheres. Okay, so in this, we want to find out what the uh, resulting volume is, the work done by the system, the heat entering or leaving the system, the change in the internal energy and the change in the enthalpy. So solving this, uh, We have our uh, state function because it's an ideal gas. So we have PV equals nRT. And that means that we have a uh, pressure, we have the volume, we have R and we have T which means that we can find oops, the number of moles is equal to PV over RT. And to make that work, we need to pick R having the right units. So we're going to use uh, R is equal to 8.20. Five seven times ten to the minus two liter atmosphere per Kelvin mole, and this is part of what I think makes thermodynamics challenging, uh, particularly when you're first learning it, is that the units don't line up quite as nicely as they do in most in most engineering applications. So uh, all through the process of problem solving, make sure that you make your units work and carry them along in your your calculations. So substituting in these values into here we get 9.14 mole. Okay, that'll be useful. Uh, what else do we have? Well, we know that uh, because it's isothermal, we know that the temperature doesn't change. 
right? That's just the definition here. So let's uh, write that in. And that means that going back to our, uh, our uh, state function here, the temperature, the uh, R, the N, and the uh, don't, don't change, but P and V do. So that means that the uh, initial and final N, R, T have to be the same, which means that P1, V1 equals P2, V2, which means that V2 is equal to P1 over P2, V1. And that is going to give us 22.5 liter. So into there. Okay, great. So that was one of the problems we wanted to solve. Uh, what is the volume? See here. Let me highlight those as we as we uh, come to them. So we got the volume now. Um, uh, the work done by the system and the heat entering and leaving the system. Well, the definition is that delta T is equal to zero. And that means that delta U is equal to zero, right? And that's because we have a heat capacity which is not infinite. So that means that uh, that means that uh, if the temperature doesn't change, there is no change in the internal energy. And is that? One of our problems here, I think, is one of the questions we have also. Uh, change in the internal energy. Okay. And because of that, we have uh, du is equal to dq minus dw. So we now know that. Uh, dQ equals dW. And we know that the work being done is pressure volume work. So we have integral P dV is equal to integral V1, V2, N, R, T over V, D, V, or N, R, T log V from V2 to V1, or N, RT log of V2 over V1. And note that uh, log, I'm using natural log for my expression log in, in all of my uh, writing here. So, uh, just be aware of that notation. I'll, I'll use log base 10 if I'm, if I'm looking at a log base 10. So, okay, what have we got here? Uh, we've got two volumes. And we've got T and we've got N. So we have to put something in for R that will give us the correct units and R could take 
one four joule mole Kelvin or one point nine eight seven cal per mole Kelvin. And there's lots of different units you can pick, of course. Uh, here, we're just gonna work with Joule. Um, not that one set of units is superior to the other. Uh, it really just depends on the application. And if you do this and you make your substitutions, you wind up with, 9243 joule is equal to dq is equal to dw. Okay, so we got the work and we got the uh, uh, heat flow, but none of that energy is stored in the system. It comes in and, and it goes out. And what else do we need? I think the last question here is about the enthalpy. E-N-T-H-A-L-P-Y. So we have delta H, and that is equal to delta U plus PV, or U2 minus U1 plus P2 V2 minus P1 V1. Okay, and in this case, we know that's equal to zero from here. And we also know that this has to also be equal to zero. So in this case, delta H is equal to zero. And, and this is what we get for the isothermal expansion. Now let's go to the adiabatic expansion. And in the case of the adiabatic expansion, this means uh, work can be done on the system or by the system, but no heat is exchanged between the system and the universe. And uh, it's a closed system, so no mass exchanges either. Okay, we've got the, our same initial temperature, volume, and pressure. And we're told that pressure changes to, to the atmosphere as before. And we still know from the previous page that uh, the number of moles is 9.14. That hasn't changed. Okay. So for the adiabatic expansion, uh, well, there's a little derivation in your textbook, uh, and we'll see that in the notes. But the outcome of that derivation is that uh, in an adiabatic sense, uh, we have P2 over P1 is equal to V1 over V2 related by this power. And this 
is equal to R over the molar constant volume uh, heat capacity, or sorry, not constant, the molar volumetric heat, uh, heat capacity plus one. And we're given in this problem that the volumetric constant volume heat capacity is uh, 1.5 R, which means this is R over 1.5 R plus one or 1.66. So taking this, we have V1 over V2 is equal to P1 sorry, P2 over over uh, P1, and this is going to be one over gamma, and we want V2, so we get V2 is equal to V1, P1 over P2, one over gamma, and that gives us 19.15 liter. So we put that up into here. Highlight that because it's one of our solutions. Then we need the temperature and uh, the temperature is going to come from PV equals NRT. In state two, we've got pressure, volume, uh, molar quantity, and R. So we get T2 is equal to P2V2 over NR or 255 Kelvin. And once we have the uh, temperature or the change in the temperature, that's going to allow us to compute the change in the internal energy based on the heat capacities. So we have a heat capacity of, uh, look at this, CV is equal to, sorry, DU by DT, right? It's change in energy with change in uh, temperature, constant volume, which D, sorry, Delta Q over Delta T V. But this is uh, just units of Joule per Kelvin. And CV then is Joule per Kelvin mole. And CV is equal to uh, 1.5 R. So to get this into useful units, R must be equal to 8.314 Joule mole Kelvin. And CV is equal to uh, N 
CV. So that's going to be N 1.5 R. This value for R. And I haven't plugged in for that. Uh, but the place we use this, we use this with our uh, energy expression. So we have du is equal to cv dt d1 to d2 is equal to, well, let's just write the solution here, n 1.5 r t 2 minus t1. gives us negative five one two nine joule. Okay, so we got the change in the internal energy. Oh, what are we missing? What are we missing here? We've got the change in internal energy, we got the change in the volume, the change in the temperature, uh, work, 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 right. Well, what do we have for work? Well, we know that Uh, dq equals zero by definition is one of our problems. So du is equal to dq minus. So that means that the work is 5,129 joule. Okay. And I think the last step here is the enthalpy. And we have an enthalpy. Delta PV. I saw that in the previous expression. One problem here is that our pressure volume are in units of uh, atmosphere liter. And our internal energy is in units of joule. Well, we know that Joule is, uh, you know, Newton meter, right? Because there's a force times a distance. I always have to think back to uh, first semester physics when I get my units worked out correctly. Uh, liter atmosphere. Well, atmosphere is a pressure, which we can turn into Newton meter squared, and that's a Pascal, and liter, we can turn into meters cubed, which then will cancel out to give us Newton meters or joules. So one, Liter atmosphere is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 Pascal per atmosphere and 1 meter cubed is 1,000, 10 times uh, 10 to the third liter 
which means that we have 101 joule per ATM liter. So that means up here, we're gonna put in minus five, one, two, nine, plus, uh, what are these? 19.15 and 10, one, nine point one five times 10 minus 15 times 15 times 101. And when you do that, you get delta H is equal to minus 8513 joule. So this was a demonstration of a simple ideal gas and an isothermal expansion. And then that same gas system and an adiabatic expansion.